What is friction all about? Don't forget that this video has a corresponding lab with free teacher notes. See the link in the description. Okay, so today we are looking at friction. It's the resistance one surface experiences as it moves over another experience, like me moving my hand over my hand, that's called friction. Okay, in fact, if you do that with your hands, you'll feel that friction causes heat. Feel that? Yeah. Okay, so that's what friction is. Now, to give you a feel for friction, we are going to move some furniture around. You ready? Okay, now move it back the other way. Okay, what do you think? Was that, was that pretty straightforward and easy? Okay, okay. okay now pick it up. All right, put it over here on the carpet. Okay. Now try. Now try and move it. <laughs> so what happened? Okay, you got it, right? Alright, who else wants to have a go? Alright. So, which pieces of furniture? Was it the couch or was it the coffee table? The couch. couch. Okay, it was the couch to move, right? And which surface was the hardest to move over? The carpet. The carpet, okay. Now, why is that? Why was it harder? To move, yes. It had the carpet had more friction. Okay, had to do with friction. But what does that mean, right? What does it mean again in terms of the physics? What's going on? And friction has to do with two major things. Number one is the two surfaces, two surfaces in contact, right? And the second thing is the mass of the object. When it's flat, we could even say the weight. It turns out that every surface. Even things like glass that are really smooth, they all have tiny little bumps and bits. Do you know that? Even glass, which is really smooth. So every surface kind of looks like this, right? And some surfaces have a lot more bumps and pits than other ones. Okay? Now what's going to happen if I stick those two surfaces together and then I try and slide this one past that one? Why is it not going to move? Okay, so when you stick those surfaces together, okay, they're not going to want to slide past each other. So, I've got some surfaces here, different things. I want you guys to take these, and I want you guys to, to take different objects and slide them past each other and tell me which two have the most friction. So just take any of any two things and rub them past each other. What happens there when those two stud when the two sets of studs get in contact? Are they moving? No. No. But what about this? That's yes, and that's the smooth side, right? That's the smooth side. But even on the smooth side, are there bumps and pits? Yes. Yes, there are. So friction. One of the most important factors in friction then has to do with the two surfaces, right? Mm -hmm. What do those surfaces look like? What are the lots and lots of pits and bumps or how many pits and bumps are there on the surface? And that's one very important factor in friction as well as I said as mass. So we're going to do an experiment to test out different surfaces. Are we excited? Yes! yes. Alright everyone, outside. So for example, um, you guys know what this is okay yeah, yeah. piece of wood painted piece of wood this is a piece of wood and it's actually beveled on one edge here just to make sure that it doesn't get stuck going down the ramp so that what we're looking at is actually the two surfaces in contact so if I put the piece of wood on there like that is it moving No. okay it's not moving all right so is it moving now no. why is it not moving because there's too much Okay, so it's not moving because there's friction, right? Okay, is it moving now? No. All right, why is it not moving? Friction. Is there any? It's still the friction, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna take it up. Whoa! Okay, so what happened? Sorry, sorry, 
because it's, there was so much height that it started that it, overpowered. it overpowered the friction, right. So what we're looking at is a kind of friction called static friction. There's another kind called kinetic and we're not going to get into that. But we can determine the point at which the friction is overcome by just putting the two surfaces together like this and lifting up the ramp and figuring out the height at which the block starts to slide down the ramp. And so here's, you guys, here's what you guys are going to do. You guys are going to uh, put the, put the, start with the block and then someone's going to lift it up, right? And at the point that it gets lifted up, whoop, we're going to measure the height. We're going to do that and then we've got, we've got metal to go on here and we're going to put wood on metal. And then we're going to put wood on glass. And then we're going to put wood on sandpaper and wood on cloth. And we're gonna see which two surfaces have the greatest amount of friction. Okay, one more thing. It's wood on wood, two surfaces are wood on wood, and it's sliding, right? When it's sliding, what's causing it to slide down like that? Gravity. Gravity, excellent job. Yes, gravity. What about right now? Is gravity still working on this? Yes. Yeah. Why isn't it sliding down? Because there's too much friction. Because there's friction, right? So friction is stopping it from sliding down. So here's a question, is friction Force. Yes. 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 You're not sure about that? Yep. No. no. <laughs> it it's is not. a force. Okay. Yep. I'm it good. is a force. All right. So on the lab, you've got a triangle and a block. I want you guys to draw in the gravity force. What is the gravity force going to look like? There is a part of the gravity force that's pointing down to the ground, and we're not going to get into that today. But a portion of the gravity force is pushing the block where? down the ramp, which means you need an arrow facing down the ramp. Now, where are you going to put the friction force then? If force, if friction is a force, and if friction stopping the block from moving, go ahead and write your friction force arrow. What's it going to look like? What's the friction force doing? It's stopping it moving downhill, right? So therefore the friction force has to be working opposite. Is it working opposite? Yes, so in which direction would okay. we... Uphill! That's right. Okay. Yep, that's exactly right. And the two arrows are actually the same length. Because when the object's not moving like this, right, when it's right on the verge of moving, so right at this point, both arrows are exactly the same length. And that means they're cancelling each other out, and that's why it's stuck. All right, guys, we are done. Thank you, teacher. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And that's all from me, Ken Colson, here at Science for Kids with Dr. C. Look, if you were helped by this video in any way whatsoever, then go ahead and pound that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell while you are there. Look, and if you want to give then please, I'd really appreciate that. You'll find a link in the description.